The Georgia Guidestones, sometimes referred to as the American Stonehenge, was a granite monument that was completed in 1980 in Elbert County, Georgia. It was 19 feet 3 inches tall and made from 6 granite slabs weighing a total of 237,746 pounds. The monument's creator, a man going by the pseudonym Robert C. Christian, believed that there was going to be an upcoming social, nuclear, or economic calamity and wanted the monument to serve as a guide for humanity in a world which would exist after the upcoming apocalypse. Controversial from the time of construction, it ultimately became the subject of many conspiracy theories, which alleged that it was connected to Satanism. On the morning of July 6, 2022, the Guidestones were heavily damaged in the bombing and were dismantled later that day. But why? Why were the Guidestones so controversial that someone would want them destroyed? And what is written on them? And what was their true purpose? Let's try and find out. Hello, I'm Mike Joburg, a Marine Corps veteran and filmmaker we will try to answer these questions on today's episode of Forgotten History. In June of 1979, Robert C. Christian approached Elberton Granite Finishing Company on behalf of a small group of loyal Americans and commissioned the structure. Christian explained that the stones would function as a compass, calendar, and clock, and should be capable of withstanding catastrophic events. Christian said that he wanted to build a granite monument that would rival the British Neolithic monument Stonehenge, of which he drew inspiration from the structure after he paid a visit to it. However, he said that while it was impressive, from what we understand, Stonehenge has no message to communicate. Joe Fainley of Elberton Granite believed that Christian was a nut and he attempted to discourage him by providing a price quote for the commission which was several times higher than any project the company had previously undertaken, explaining that the construction of the Guidestones would require additional tools and consultants. To Fainley's surprise, Christian accepted the quote. When arranging payment, Christian claimed that he represented a group which had been planning to construct the Guidestones for 20 years and wanted to remain anonymous. Christian said that he had chosen Elbert County because of its abundance of local granite, the rural nature of the landscape, its mild climate, and family ties to the region. The cost of the project was not revealed, but it was over 100000 equivalent to 400000 in 2022. Christian then delivered a scale model of the Godstones and 10 pages of specifications. The five-acre site was purchased by Christian from a local farm owner. The owner and his children were given lifetime cattle grazing rights on the Godstone site. The monument was located off Georgia State Route 77, around 7 miles north of the city of Elberton. On March 22, 1980, the monument was unveiled by Congressman Doug Barnard before an audience of between 200 and 300 people. At the unveiling, the Master of Ceremonies read the following message. In order to avoid debate, we, the sponsors of the Georgia Guidestones, have a simple message for human beings, now and for the future. We believe our precepts are sound and they must stand on their own merits. Christian later transferred the ownership of the land and the Guidestones to Elbert County. He later published a book titled Common Sense Renewed in 1986, which described the ideology of the Guidestones as such. I'm the originator of the Georgia Guidestones and the sole author of its inscriptions. I have had the assistance of a number of other American citizens in bringing the monument into being. We have no mysterious purpose or ulterior motives. We seek common sense pathways to a peaceful world without bias for particular creeds or philosophies. Finley believed that the monument would become a regional tourist attraction. As of 2022, 20,000 visitors were reported annually. But the monument was controversial even before it was unveiled. Some locals referred to its construction as the devil's work. A local minister warned that occult groups would visit the site and that a sacrifice was imminent. 2009 Wired article noted that the sandblaster Charlie Clamp spent hundreds of hours on the etching, during which time he was constantly distracted by strange music and disjointed voices. In 2008, the stones were defaced with graffiti with slogans such as Death to the New World Order. After the acts of vandalism, security cameras were installed on the site. Candace Taylor, a candidate in the 2022 Georgia Republican gubernatorial primary, called the Guidestones satanic in an ad campaign. Her campaign platform also called for the monument to be removed. But why? 
a message consisting of a set of 10 guidelines or principles was engraved on the Georgia Guidestones in eight different languages, one language on each face of the four large upright stones. Moving clockwise around the structure from due north, these languages were English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, traditional Chinese, and Russian. The languages were chosen because they represented most of humanity, except for Hebrew, which was chosen because of its connections to Judaism and Christianity. According to the monument sponsors, the inscriptions are meant to guide humanity to conserve nature after a nuclear war, which the creators thought was an imminent threat. The inscription is dealt with four main themes, governance and the establishment of a world government, population and reproduction control, the environment and humankind's relationship to nature and spirituality. The inscription read, Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Unite humanity with a living new language. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature, leave room for nature. A few feet to the west of the monument, an additional granite ledger had been set level with the ground. This tablet identified the structure and the languages used on it and listed various facts about the size, weight, and astronomical features of the stones, the date it was installed, and the sponsors of the project. It referred to a time capsule buried under the tablet, but blank spaces on the stone, intended for filling in the dates on which the capsule was buried and was to be opened, had not been inscribed, so it was uncertain if the time capsule was ever actually put in place. Immediately below this was the outline of the square, inside which was written, Let these be guidestones to an age of reason. Around the edges of the square were written translations to four ancient languages, one per edge. Starting from the top and proceeding clockwise, they were in Babylonian cuneiform, classical Greek, Sanskrit, and ancient Egyptian in hieroglyphics. Astronomical features of the four outer stones were oriented to mark the limits of the 18.6 year lunar declination cycle. The central column featured a hole drilled at an angle from one side to the other through which the North Star could be seen. The same pillar had a slot carved through it which was aligned with the sun's solstices and equinoxes. A seventh of an eighth inch aperture in the capstone allowed a ray of sun to pass through at noon each day, shining a beam on the center stone indicating the day of the year. University of Georgia astronomer Loris Magnani referred to these features as mediocre at best and sees them as an abacus compared to the Stonehenge's computer. The Guidestones became a subject of interest for conspiracy theorists. Opponents have labeled them the Ten Commandments of the Antichrist. Activist Mark Dice demanded that the Guidestones should be smashed into a million pieces and the rubble should be used for a construction project, claiming that the Guidestones are of a deep satanic origin and that R.C. Christian belongs to a Luciferian secret society related to the New World Order. At the unveiling of the monument, a local minister proclaimed that he believed that the monument was for sun worshippers, for cult worship, and for devil worship. Conspiracy theorist Jay Widener said that the pseudonym of the man who commissioned the stones, R.C. Christian, resembles Rose Cross Christian, or Christian Rosa Cruz, the founder of the Rosicrucian Order. Others who agree with Widener point to the Rosicrucian's first manifesto, written in 1614, which states, The word R.C. should be their seal, mark, and character. They also see similarities between the writing on the capstone and the title of Rosicrucian, Thomas Paine's The Age of Reason. On July 6, 2022, an explosive device was detonated at the site, destroying the Swahili Hindi language slab and causing significant damage to the capstone. Nearby residents reportedly heard and felt explosions at around 4 a.m. CCTV footage recorded a vehicle leaving the scene and police investigated the incident. The remaining stones were dismantled by authorities for safety reasons later that day with a backhoe. The Elbert County Sheriff's Office investigated the bombing with the assistance from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. No motives have been publicly shared and no suspects have been publicly identified. Prosecutors suggested that as the guidestones were maintained by the county, they were considered a public building, thus their destruction would carry a minimum sentence of 20 years in prison. In late July of 2022, Upperton Mayor Daniel Graves said the town planned to rebuild the monument exactly as it was 
It may take six months to a year to do it, but we're going to do it. However, on August 8, 2022, the Elberton City Council voted to begin legal proceedings to return the five acres of land the monument had built on to its previous owner, a local farmer. The City Council announced that the remains of the monument, which had been moved to a third-party location for safety reasons, would be given to the Elberton Granite Association. Both the Elberton Granite Association and the Elberton City Council expressed doubt that the Guidestones would be rebuilt, but expressed hope that one day it could happen. Although I agree with some of the 10 proposed guidelines, guideline number one let me know on the onset that they were nefarious in nature. The current world population is 8.1 billion, and I still see plenty of land and resources to go around, especially if it was better managed. There would have to be a lot of deaths to get the population back down to 500 million as proposed. Number two sounds like eugenics to me, which I consider to be evil. Number three would be hard to do, and with the advent of technology, I don't think it's necessary. I don't have a problem with numbers four and five. Number six sounds like globalism to me, and I would be against that. I agree with seven. Eight would depend on what we're talking about specifically. Number nine, if the infinite is referring to God, then I would agree. And finally, number 10. I agree with taking care of the earth. I'm all about green energy, but it has to be cost effective, and it too has its downfalls. Renewable energy production often destroys habitats and people, and it hurts wildlife too. So we have to be smart about it and not rush into transitioning. Let us know your comments about the Georgia Guidestones and the 10 guidelines in the comments below. Thank you for watching Forgotten History. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments or show ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again.